<laughs> Praise the Lord. We've been talking about family the last few weeks. Praise the Lord for that. Today is Mother's Day. Uh, I know that Mother's Day evokes different emotions for different people. Uh, I had a lady in my church in Colorado that I could expect not to see her on Mother's Day because uh, she was a single woman. She wasn't a young single woman. She was a 30-something uh, a single woman who was not married. Single women aren't married. Did y'all know that? And uh, was not having any children and that was one of the things that she would really like to do and uh, she wasn't going to do it outside of marriage. Praise the Lord for that. Uh, and so Mother's Day was a grief to her. Sometimes Mother's Day is a grief because you lost your mother. And I'm sorry for that. This is my first uh, Mother's Day without my mother. And I'm not sorry. I am excited for my mom because she got what she wanted to be able to go to be with the Lord. And I do miss her, but I wouldn't have her back here in this, on this earth in that body for anything in the world. She's free. Uh, there are those here today that Mother's Day means a great deal to them because of the children that sat around their tables because of the birthdays that their children had and they were there when their children were born you know it's a you know it's interesting some dads miss children's birthdays mothers on the other hand never miss the birthday if you understand what I'm talking about okay uh, I've heard guys say, I was working and I, I meant to be there, but I couldn't make it back in time. And mom was there. Mom was there. Praise the Lord. And I'm glad for that. I'm glad they haven't figured out a way yet for guys to have babies on their own. Uh, my wife told me once, early on, if you had every other one, we wouldn't have very many children. That was a joke, okay. <laughs> I, I, my wife told me this. Don't tell jokes. <laughs> so, when we come to the scripture, if you want to study the concept of a mother, you have to start in Genesis because God said, be fruitful and multiply and replenish the earth. It was God's plan for men to be married to women that they make a family unit and that that family unit would be uh, productive in having children and that those children would grow up under the direction and the instruction of that mom and dad and uh, and that and I have to tell you something whether your children look like you or not they're gonna take on your values because whether you say them out loud or not, they, they catch them. They, they're, they're caught as much as they are taught. Amen. All right. So if you, if you would, in your Bibles today, we're going, to, we're going to be looking primarily at Proverbs 31. But we're going to start over in 1 Thessalonians, the second chapter. 1 Thessalonians, the second chapter. When we're looking at the scripture... And we're looking at the concept of uh, what is a mother about, okay? Well, I, I want you to know that moms, uh, according to the Word of God, that moms didn't just give birth to the baby. Uh, they gave life to the baby after they were born. Uh, Paul comes... In 1 Thessalonians, the second chapter, and, uh, and he says this. He says, but we, 
were gentle among you, even as a nurse cherisheth her children. Okay? Now, a nursing mother is a mother that is literally giving nourishment and strength to their children. Somebody say amen. And by the way, your pastor still believes that nursing is the most healthy form of feeding your babies. I know they have ways now that you can feed them all kinds of infamil and soya meal and every kind of meal and, uh, and even cow meal, but I, cow meal wasn't made for baby children, okay? Uh, it, you know, God said, God gave us, God made us. And when God made us, he made the woman with the ability to nurse her own children. We are a society that says we don't want what God wants. We want to do it our way. We want to have children when we want to have children. We want to be able to have children in wedlock, outside of wedlock. We want to have children that are begotten and we want, we want to have children that are made and that's scientifically. Uh, we, we want to be able to say whether we want to feed our children what God designed or whether we give them something else. Now I'm just going to tell you, God has a design. It's always best. Are you listening? It's always best to follow God's design. And that's the truth. It's best for the mother. It's best for the child. We'll talk about that in, at length other times. Paul comes here and he says, and he compares the relationship of a parent Christian to a baby Christian to a mother and her children. And he says there's some things about mothers that, ne that are commonly known and understood. He said, we were gentle among you just like mothers are gentle with their children. I hope your mother was gentle. Because if she was, she's following the biblical mandate. You understand that? Uh, and, and moms, God says, hey, be gentle with your kids. It didn't say don't. Don't discipline them. It said be gentle with them. Okay. And it says gentle like a nursing mother. Okay. And so if, if we have that. If, we, if we're. Uh, that nourishment. Paul says I'm, I am with you. To give you the kind of spiritual nourishment. That a mother gives physically and spiritually to her children. So I wanted to bring that up. There are some other scriptures that I will give you right now. While you turn. To Proverbs 31. In Deuteronomy 27, 16. And this is kind of backing up last week's sermon. But it's bringing us into this week's sermon with new scripture. First of all, in Deuteronomy 27, 16. It says. Now children, listen up carefully. And all of us are children. Did you know that? And it says. Uh, Cursed is the one who treats his father or his mother with contempt and all the people said amen this was one of those times when they were they would say the blessings and they would say the cursings and they would they put them opposite with the choirs on each side or groups of people and they would say the blessings and the people would say amen to the blessings and then they would say the curses and the people would say amen to the curses as well because they knew it was the truth of God. And one of the truths of God was, cursed is the one who treats his father or his mother with contempt. There you go. Matthew, the 15th chapter and the fourth verse, you can write it down as a reference. The Bible says, for God commanded. And so now they're referencing the things that God said in the law. Two things it says there. One, for God commanded saying, honor your father and your mother. We read that in, in uh, Exodus 20 and in Deuteronomy 5 last week. Okay. Uh, but he also says, uh, honor your father and your mother and the same sentence, he who curses father or mother, let him be put to death. Now you say, well, you know, that's the old days. That's, that's, 
That shouldn't be done today. Well, I don't know. I'm just telling you what God's word says in the New Testament. Okay? And, and what they're quoting there is Leviticus, the 20th chapter and the 9th verse. It also says in Mark, the 7th chapter and the 10th verse, for Moses said, now in, ver in Matthew 15, it says, for God commanded. In, in Mark 7, it says, for Moses said, honor your father and your mother and he who curses father or mother, let him be put to death. So we have at least two of our New Testament writers, Matthew and Mark, saying, hey, moms and fathers, moms and dads, but here we're on Mother's Day, right? Mothers are to be honored by their children. They're not to be held in contempt, and they're not to be cursed by their children. Somebody say amen. Okay, now, we're, now we've worked our way over to our text for today. In, uh, in Proverbs, the 31st chapter, there are some the, thou shalt nots, but there are also some thou shalts. And this is, a, this is a great passage of scripture. I'm sure there's not a woman in this audience, if you've been around Bible studies at all, that, uh, and the women's Bibles, Bible studies especially, that has not studied Proverbs, the 31st chapter. How many people understand the, the Proverbs 31 woman? Oh, I've got one woman and one man that raised their hand. We have an ignorant crowd here today. Okay. So, now, how many of you understand the Proverbs 31 woman concept? All right, all right. I'm being paid back. I didn't raise my hand a while ago when Brother Darrell said all men raise their hands and people aren't raising their hands over the Proverbs 31 woman. Uh, now, in this passage, there's a lot here. There's more than we can cover this morning. So I, I want to, you know, there's a, there's a whole section here that talks about what she does. And that's a good section. There's nothing wrong with it. But I want, to, I want to drop down to the part where it talks about who she is. Who she is. And so this is a great thing for us to study today and, and something for us to be able to recognize in godly women. The Bible says in Proverbs, the 31st chapter, beginning in the 25th verse. In the 25th verse. And understand, now, now you know, this isn't really fair. This isn't really fair. I'm speaking as a man. This is the word of God. So what it says is exactly right. I'm not questioning that. But if you go back to the first verse, it says the words of King Lemuel, the prophecy that his mother taught him. It's not fair. You understand? But it's, it is still the word of God. Because uh, it's what his mother taught him about mothers. Amen. And I want to tell you something. We ought to listen to what our mothers say about mothers. Here's what it says in the 25th verse. Strength and honor are her clothing. And she shall rejoice in time to come. She openeth her mouth with wisdom. And in her tongue is the law of kindness. She looketh well to the ways of her household and eateth not the bread of idleness. Her children ri arise up and call her blessed, her husband also, and he praiseth her. Many daughters have done virtuously, but thou excellest them all. Favor is deceitful and beauty is is vain but a woman that feareth the Lord she shall be praised praise the Lord praise the Lord now there's some things here I want you to see for this morning at Mother's Day and I, I want I want to say to to moms everywhere I believe I personally believe that most women are beautiful on their own 
They don't all look alike. But most women are beautiful. God just made them like that. It's a wonderful thing. But the Bible says that beauty is vain. So he doesn't intend for women to emphasize their beauty. That's not, the, that's not God's purpose in your life. Somebody say amen. You see, the Bible says here, the woman that feareth the Lord, she shall be praised. It doesn't say the woman who has the best figure shall be praised. The woman that is the most beautiful shall be praised. It doesn't say that. It says the woman that feareth the Lord, she shall be praised. It doesn't say the smartest woman is going to be praised. It doesn't say the woman with the best hairdo or the best makeup is going to be praised. No, it doesn't say any of that stuff. What does it say? It says the woman that feareth the Lord, she shall be praised. Now I want you to know something. Sometimes we do not have the ability to, to direct what God does with us in the way that he makes us. I, I said sometimes, it's all the time. Sometimes we can do things that kind of corrective measures. But, uh, you know, we, they once took a, they once did a survey among women that were considered beautiful. They were, they were beauty contestants. And they asked them, if you had the power to change anything about yourself, what would it be? And every single one of those beautiful women found a flaw in the way that they looked. And the way that they looked was the number one way they would change themselves. I hope that every guy in here, are you listening carefully? I hope that every guy in here that when you get down to serious talking to your wife, you're able to say to her with all honesty, you're the most beautiful woman I've ever known in my life. That ought to be true. It ought to be true from your heart. You don't have to compare her to anybody else. If she fears the Lord, she is a beautiful woman. Do you hear what I'm saying to you? The first thing that God teaches us about the woman, the, the godly woman, the mother that everybody wants to be. Number one, number one, the woman that fears the Lord, she shall be praised. Now what does it mean to fear the Lord? Well, first of all, it means that when we look into the Word of God, we believe it. We believe what it says. That's somebody that fears the Lord. Somebody that reads the Word and says, well, I, you know, I accept this part, but I don't accept this part, and I'm not planning to live by this part, and I'm certainly planning to disobey this part. I want to tell you something. That's not somebody who fears the Lord. Everybody understand that? You cannot be a God-fearing woman and not have Jesus Christ as your Savior. Oh, but Brother Gary, I, I believe in God. It doesn't matter. The Bible says the demons believe in God and they tremble. And they're not saved. And they're, they're going to spend their eternity in hell. And so is every other person who hasn't accepted Jesus Christ as their personal Savior. The first step to becoming a God-fearing woman is to trust Jesus Christ as your personal Lord and Savior. And then, a God-fearing woman, listen to me carefully, a God-fearing woman is a woman that is aware that God is watching and judging everything she thinks and everything she does and has an inward desire to be pleasing to the God who is watching. That's a God-fearing woman. Everybody say amen. I am grateful for the God-fearing women that we have in Ritama Park Baptist Church. Praise God.
Praise God. Now, uh, there's, a, there's a second thing here. And, and I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to jump up there because it talks about how she's dressed. How she's dressed. Talks about her clothing. Now, I want you to know it's not talking about silk. And it's not talking about cotton. And it's not talking about polyester. And it's not talking about uh, low cut or high cut or anything else. It's, in fact, the clothing is defined like this. It says uh, her clothing is strength and honor. Strength and honor are her clothing. Now, I want you to know something, ladies. You can dishonor the Lord himself oftentimes by the way that you dress. Now, we're not going to get on this very long, but I'm going to bring it up. Your body belongs to the Lord and to your husband. And it's not intended to be on public display for everybody else to enjoy. That doesn't mean you can't go out in public. It just means that when you go out in public, you ought to have the private things covered. You say, Brother Gary, you sound like a preacher from a hundred years ago. Well, the Bible says that the character here is honor. The clothing here is honor. And if we're going to honor the Lord with our clothing, then we're not going to excite desires that cannot be righteously fulfilled in the hearts and minds of other people. You say, well, that's their problem. No, not if I have the possibility to control that. Somebody say amen. So, strength. Strength is her clothing. Now, I, I personally believe that it is not talking about her ability to lift 100-pound sacks of feed, okay? To take them out to the chickens or something like that. All right? Duly noted, Brother Darrell. All right. <laughs> he has chickens. That's the only reason I said that. You know... This strength is talking about strength of character. Uh, the, uh, the, the tiniest little person with the smallest little frame can be one of the strongest people you know when the strength is of character. The biggest person that you know with the biggest frame and the ability to bust you in the chops can be one of the weakest people you know if they're weak in character. Amen. And so, strength is her clothing. What is that? Strength of character. Strength of character is honesty. Strength of character is faithfulness. Strength of character is virtue. When we begin to look at the, at the Word of God and we begin to realize the things that God tells us to build into our life, uh, character strength is the first thing that God wants to begin to build into every single one of us. Strength of character. And then the other part of the clothing is honor. I call this honor of conduct. Honor of conduct. Strength of character produces honor of conduct. The way that I act, whether it's in public or whether it's in private, the way that I talk, whether it's with people at church or somebody else somewhere else. There is nothing, there is, you listening to me? There is nothing more unappealing and, and, uh, and uh, unbeautiful than a woman with a sewer mouth. Everybody understand what I'm talking about? You know, she can curse just like a sailor. Well, pity the sailor who never learned to control his tongue, who doesn't walk in the way of the Lord. God wants us, if we're going to, if honor is going to be our clothing, then virtue is going to be our manner of walking and talking and speaking. Amen. So first of all, a woman who fears the Lord. 
is the, is the mother of the year. Amen. Praise God. Praise God. I hope you're a mother of the year. Because you fear the Lord. Secondly, a well-dressed mother is a mother of the year. And I hope that you're dressed today in strength of character and honor, honorable of conduct. Everybody say amen. Third thing, the Bible says, she openeth her mouth in wisdom and her tongue is the law of kindness. In her tongue is the law of kindness. Now, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna, to uh, bring out a couple of things here. One, one, uh, this woman, when she opens her mouth, you hear the wisdom of God coming out. You don't hear the wisdom of the world. You don't hear the profaneness of the world. You don't, ha you don't hear the, the complaining of the world. Because I want you to know, if you read this book, if you read that whole chapter, that woman's not complaining about anything. She's at it. She's, she's doing her part. Amen? And she, if she doesn't like it, she, gets, she does whatever it takes to change it. Amen? And so she is wise in the things of God. Let me go on. It says, she, her, in her tongue is the law of kindness. Now, I want to say something to you. The law is kind to those who obey the law. You understand that? You see, the law isn't, the law itself, we are told this in the Word of God, the law isn't for people who keep the law. The law is for lawbreakers. If I, drive, if I drive 55, the law is not for me. I can be left out of the law. But if I want to drive 65 in a 55, guess what? The law is for me. You understand what I'm saying? And so the Bible says that in her tongue is the law of kindness. That means she's made a decision. There are certain things that I will say and there are certain things that I won't say. There are certain attitudes that I will have. There are certain attitudes that I won't have and I'm going to live according to the law of kindness in my life. And say, well, that works pretty good for me, Brother Gary, until I get mad. That works pretty good for me until I get Tired. That works pretty good for me until I get resistance. So you can choose your excuse. But the Bible says here that this woman that's being described as the virtuous mother, her, in her tongue is the what? The law of kindness. That doesn't mean she doesn't ever correct. It just means that she does it in a way that you know she, you, she loves you while she's correcting you. Amen. There's another thing here. It says, are you ready for this? Verse 27 says, She looketh well to the ways of her household and eateth not the bread of idleness. Now if we have a plague in the United States of America... It is a plague of laziness. And we're not just talking about women here, okay? We're talking about people, you know, we, we had a question a while ago, and I thought it was an interesting question, and I, I, I hope uh, using this personal reference isn't going to upset anybody. But we had, a, we had a question earlier, would you rather play games or go outside and play? And the answer was, I'd rather play games. Well, I've got news for you. My generation didn't play games. We played games outside. You know? We, we, were, we, we played with sticks. And we played with ants. And we played with trees. You know? I mean, you know, we could see Tarzan. And, the, and you know, for the next week, we were going to be out there jumping from one mesquite tree to the other, swinging from one branch to the other. You couldn't keep us down. I mean, we were flyers through the jungle. 
We had our red wagons and we went on, we went on adventures. I mean, we were going down the Amazon River in our red wagons. Kids today don't even know what a red wagon is. I hate to tell you this, uh, we're becoming couch potatoes. And the couch potatoes are going to become idle people. Because everything they do is going to be in front of a screen. And when you're doing everything you do in front of a screen, there's no movement involved in that unless you're willing to sit on an on a exercise bicycle while you watch it. Or walk on a treadmill while you watch it. I've done that. It's very invigorating. Walk on a treadmill while you're watching the morning news. It's still walking indoors. All right, now listen to me. The Bible says that here she looks well to the ways of her household. In the New Testament, it says that the, young, the older women are to teach the younger women to be keepers at home. What does that mean? That means they stay home. What does it mean? It means they keep their house. It means they cook the meals. Uh, you know, uh, now I, I can tell you there's nothing wrong with a guy who likes to cook. You understand that? Not a thing wrong with it in the world. But the Bible says here that she looketh well to the ways of her household. What does that mean? She takes care of stuff at home. Well, but Brother Gary, it talks about her having business and selling and buying. Yeah, but you know what else it says? It says she takes care of the stuff at home. If my life becomes so uh, organized or so uh, successful or so uh, excited about advancement, that I can't take care of what's at home, I'm going in the wrong direction. Somebody say amen. You see, the Bible says she looketh well to the ways of her household, and in case we didn't know what that meant, it says she eateth not the bread of idleness. In other words, she doesn't just sit around. She doesn't leave things undone. Her laundry is not all piled up underneath some hidden cabinet. Her dishes are not all on the, ca on the, on the top of the, the, whatever that thing is. What's it called? Counter. counter. Thank you. It's not on the counter. My wife drives me crazy. There will be no dirty dishes when we go to bed at night. No dishes will sleep in the sink that's a law and in a way I've come to learn that it's a law of kindness especially if I don't want ants in the house you as a woman must choose if you're going to eat the bread of idleness two things are going to happen if you eat the bread of idleness Things are not going to get done around your house. And you're going to grow to great proportions. Eat the bread of idleness. Those two things are going to happen. It's, uh, it's inevitable. He says she, she looks well to the way of her household. And she eateth not the bread of idleness. There's a third. There's another thing here. Uh, it says... Her children arise and call her blessed. Her husband also, and he praiseth her. Now, if I could write a sentence that, that explains this, it means her husband and her children are her greatest fans. Amen. Her husband and her children are her greatest fans. Why? Why is that? Because she's a, a wimpy little woman. No, she's strong of character. She's strong of character. 
She's honorable in her conduct. She fears the Lord. She is wise in the things of God. And she's a hard worker. And her kids are learning all of those virtues from mom every single day. Greatest place to learn is at home. And the greatest place to teach is at home. God gives us a beautiful picture here. Paul says, the greatest picture I can give you of gentleness and kindness is a nursing mother. The Bible tells us in the Old Testament and in the New Testament, you ought not hold your mother in contempt. And you definitely ought not. See, holding them in contempt is an attitude. Cursing them is an action that comes out of the attitude. Uh, children and husbands honored them. They call her a blessed woman. They praise her. Why? Because she's God's kind of woman. Amen. You know, uh, uh, after I met Brenda, I thought in myself, that's my kind of woman. What I told her was, I'm your kind of guy. I am ruggedly handsome. I knew I couldn't tell her I was handsome and get away with it. I had to, I had to throw in some kind of adjective. I'm, I'm ruggedly handsome. And I told her that. I, I use the, the, the press idea today. The press says, you know, it doesn't matter if you're lying straight through your teeth. If you say it often enough, people begin to believe it. And so I said it often. You understand what I'm saying? God desires for us, men and women and children, to be able to say of the women in our life and in our households, this is a woman of God. This is a woman of character. This is a woman of God kind of conduct. This is, a, this is a woman who dresses according to what she believes about the word of God and who she's trying to impress. She's trying to impress her husband and she's trying to impress God. And she acts the same way. She's trying to impress her husband. And she's trying to impress God. And everybody else. Except the kids. Are unimportant. Everybody understand that? We're going to have a time of invitation. You know as a mom. You can say brother Gary. That's my clothing there. That strength of character and honorable of conduct. That's my, that's my clothing. Uh, a woman who fears the Lord. That's my description. Uh, a woman who is wise in the things of God and gentle and kind and, and not, not lazy and takes good care of my, I take good care of my house and, and my children and my, my husband is my, my greatest fan. My greatest fan. I hope that's true for you. If it's not, God has some work he wants to do in your life. And I want to say this to the young women. Uh, you can be a Proverbs 31 woman. But it starts by fearing the Lord. Father, we ask you in the name of Jesus that as we come to this time of invitation that you would encourage and strengthen every mother here from hearing the word of God and knowing that they're heading in the right direction. Lord, if there are some who've dropped a, uh, one of these things by the wayside, I pray that you'd give them courage today to pick it up again. Lord, I pray for strength and honor and praise to be a part of every woman's life from her husband and from her children. Lord, now, 
Bless us as we enter this time of invitation. You call to hearts. You call to hearts. If there's somebody who needs to be saved here, Lord, I pray you'd call them to yourself. If somebody needs to become a part of this fellowship, you call them to yourself. I ask you this in Jesus' name. Amen.